Good morning. I've got an overdub sessions video for you guys today, and this video actually has what a lot of you have been asking for. You can hear the finished product. <laughs> um, a lot of the overdub sessions videos I do are for demos, and they will never see the light of day. They're sort of passed around the industry as a, um, well, it's literally a demonstration recording. That's what demo is short for. This is what the song could sound like if you were to record it and put it on your record. And they're, they're aimed at artists. They're usually like, we, we'll cut a demo like this one's for Tim McGraw. We'll pitch it to him and see if he wants to cut it. That sort of thing. Well, this song, um, this is actually the first single off of Kip Fox's record. He's a buddy of mine from Arizona. We have made a few records and singles over the years. This is the first single off of his upcoming record. And the single is already out by the time you see this. So I'll have it linked in the description. Basically, we made this record with a live band. We went into a studio in Nashville, um, Omni, Omni Sound Studio, and we cut bass drums, piano, keys, and guitars. And I played all the guitars. David Dorn played keys. We hired Gordon Moat to come in and play piano and a little bit of Rhodes and some B3 for one of the days. And then we had Craig Young on bass and Jason Cheek on drums. And the record's produced by myself, David Dorn, who played all the other keyboards and synth parts, Mark Lonsway, um, who also engineered, also mixed, also sang a bunch of background vocals. He is a multi-talented guy, excellent at everything he does. Everybody involved in this was incredibly great. Um, so the way that it works is generally, if you're hiring a band to come in, and you're also playing on it as a producer, you're not quite as focused on your own parts, your own world um, during the session. Like I wasn't fully laser focused on getting all the guitars down because I knew at the session that I can take this home and add overdubs later. So let's focus on bass, drums, Gordon, you know, David Dorn and I did play some things on the session, but we didn't necessarily make sure that we were completely done. That wasn't our focus. So I brought this entire record home, listened through all the songs. I even made notes on the session, like this could use uh, some kind of other track or whatever, you know, this, this one could use an acoustic. I played acoustics and electrics on the session. I didn't really take a bunch of time stacking a bunch of parts on each song because again, we were trying to get rhythm section stuff done. When I brought this song home, opened it up, uh, it, it sounded done. I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if it really needs anything. But then I started listening through the chorus again and again, and I thought, this could use some guitar fills in the chorus. <laughs> Typical guitar player thought, right? The video you're about to watch is me overdubbing those parts. And then if you go listen to the finished product, you can hear how all that sounds in the mix. So enjoy and go check out Kip's stuff. I'll link his YouTube channel. I'll link the single on iTunes and Spotify. I'll, I'll have a few more of these videos from this record that when the record's released, I'll release some of these and you can see the overdub process and then you can go listen to the finished product. Cool, cheers. See ya. Hey, how's it going? I got a song here. This is a song that I'm producing and I think it's done. I think it only needs the one guitar part that I have on it. It's a 70s funk kind of song. I've got an ultra clean Strat just playing real percussive rhythmic stuff. Um, there are a ton of keyboard tracks. There's there's gospel roads, there's roads, there's piano, there's B3, uh, there's bass, perk, drums, and then there's my real busy electric part. And I don't know that it needs anything else. Maybe there's another guy that's doing some fills here and there. So let's go from the top. The chords are cool too. One, three major, six minor, four. There are some two majors, some four over fives in this song. Flat seven <laughs> shows
B3 part. Super cool. There's just a gap there. Flat seven major seven, four major seven, two over sharp four, four over five, two bars. Listen to this road. So cool. Okay, I gotta get in there. I gotta get into that crazy walk up. It's uh it's like one, three minor, two, and then the four over five thing, so I could play. But let's see. Ooh, I need a little more runway than that. Got it. That's how I'll play it. I think that's going to be my voice. sort of fell apart toward the end there. Let's uh, let's listen through. I'm going to punch. just thinking yeah that's cool okay I'm gonna get in right there I don't love that second maybe it just maybe I just need to execute it better I'm not sure outro needs a solo undo all right let's let's get through the chorus part and just see if the outro 
actually needs this guy to keep going, or if it's all vocal home stretch stuff. Boy, I'm gonna give myself a little more runway. One bar at 114 beats per minute, and that's not cool. Okay, here we go. So the, the outro is flat seven, four, one. And my, my other guitar is playing some figure there every time. But maybe solo guy can be there. I'm not sure yet. Till then. Let the vocals have a big moment. So. Something like that. Let's let's try another option. That's a little better, right? What I was doing was... A little dark, a little heavy. So, no more. in on it maybe time there's a slight retard on a hit and I rake into it, it feels rushed. So that's why I'm redoing this yet again. Cool. Yeah, I guess I did find a thing on this guitar. I, I like the um, the chorus stuff, these licks. That one seemed like... That one's early. Maybe I didn't settle in until after chorus one.
on that post. Dug it. Make sure the chorus two is cool. get a little cr well I don't even need one there's no anyway just because I'm paranoid all right I'm gonna send this to mix J-O extra on trouble cool and what I typically do uh, you, you can kind of see my screen here I typically just take that track highlight the whole thing go to the start of the session Shift option three, boom. Now it's consolidated. And since I named the track right before consolidating it, I can go into my session folder um, in Pro Tools into audio files. And I, I put my initials at the front and then I just look in this huge list of tracks, J-O extra trouble dash O one. Then I can press it. Um, drag it to a Pro Tools Uploads folder in my Dropbox and send the link to my mix guy. There you go. All right. I'll see you all later.